Task Force Tips in Indiana is a family-owned business manufacturing a wide range of firefighting and water delivery products. The company has installed a UR-10 and two vision-guided UR-5 robots working in tandem in their production of fire hose valves. Uh, this company was started on a paper napkin in 1968. Uh, my father had the idea that the world needed more fire nozzles. His family thought he was a little bit crazy. But the idea took hold, and we've gone from being in the basement of our home uh, some 40 years ago to being a worldwide recognized leader in this industry. A major impediment in the past to using robots was the security fencing required in front of the machine. The beautiful thing about the UR robots is that they are so user-friendly. You don't need all that guarding. You don't need all that stuff in the way. In many cases, we've actually mounted a robot directly to a little table. We roll the table up. The robot interface is so simple to use that in a few minutes you can teach it where it's at and you can load parts. So it's a, it's a fundamental paradigm shift in how robots are viewed. So the number of machines we buy with integrated gantries will go down and I think the number of UR robots we buy will go up. With the price you can buy the universal robot for, it's stuff that you're willing to invest knowing how quickly you can get the ROI back on it. And normally what would have taken seven operators to be out there running that cell has taken us down to three operators to run that entire cell. To give an idea of ROI investment, you're looking at a savings of about 34 days it takes to get the robot paid for, to justify the means of buying that robot. The first two universal robots that I worked on actually were a pair. The first, right out of the gate, um, had no training. Uh, I just powered them on and started to play around with the controls a little bit. I used the uh, universal robots support website and got a, a lot of really good information from there and, and wound up being able to put together the two robot machining cell that's doing the hose couplings. It looks really impressive, but with the Modbus communication that's on board with the Universal Robot Controller, actually didn't involve any scripting to, to do our vision communication. It just was just Modbus. It's right through the touch screen. It was deceivingly easy to do that. A vision camera above the inbound conveyor takes a picture of each blank and sends coordinates through Modbus to the UR robot that picks up the raw blank and inserts it into the first milling machine. The UR5 then takes out the half machine part already in the milling machine and hands it over to the other UR5. The second robot inserts that part into the second machine, takes out the complete machine part and places it on an outbound conveyor. As far as robot programming, this is the, the first project I've ever worked on. Um, I've not been to automation school, I'm actually a journeyman machinist, and just, if you understand just basic logic, you can do an unbelievable amount with the universal robots. The universal robots have really allowed our, our personnel on the floor to spend a lot of time being more quality conscious on catching problems sooner, because they're not worried about keeping a machine running. Part quality has really gone to a whole nother level with the UR robot in place. At TFT, we try and hire good heads, good hands, and good hearts, and we want those to be put to work in the most productive way. And for someone to stand deburring a part hours on end is not the best use of their brain or their hands. When you set people loose that they have a way to reduce the amount of mundane labor in their daily job, they find those ways. There's been multiple days I've come in, I've seen the robot somewhere else in the shop loading something or doing something. Uh, that was a surprise to me. They become kind of a partner to a person that goes around and helps them with the drudgery. Going forward with the Universal Robots, we have an idea for a deburring station that would be within the CNC working cell, where right now a person is having to scotch bright apart or you know, handy burr apart, and, and again, takes time away from what something else they could be doing. We're talking about using it on our laser machine as well, and we still haven't reached even close to all the places we think we could use them. Mm -hmm.